Hello and welcome to another set of flip video notes for AP Psychology, this set being for neurodevelopmental disorders in our Abnormal Psychology and Treatment Unit. So go ahead and have your notes and let's get started. Neurodevelopmental disorders is that group of disorders that <clears throat> involve distortions in development, hence why it's neurodevelopmental, right? But they have recently added with the DSM-5, the neuro part, um, because there is such a genetic basis for it, right? And that it's something biologically altering um, that has happened, whether that was in utero or an environmental factor, but it's it's neurologically impacted, right? So a Distortions in the development of basic psychological functions that are involved in social skills, language, perception, or motor and physical behavior. So these usually occur and are diagnosed during infancy, childhood, or even adolescence. The first big one we should talk about is autism spectrum disorder, or ASD. Um, there's actually a lot of people who know a lot about spectrum autism spectrum disorder, um, and there has been recently in the DSM-5 some changes with it, but it typically shows an unusual pattern of social, that's a big part of it, right, the social aspect, and cognitive development beginning in childhood with marked difficulties in social interaction and communication. That actually is kind of like the, the real big one that is an indicator in that things like um, a lack of making eye contact, not really seeking out or even liking affection, even with mom, is a big one. So that social interaction is huge. The spectrum now includes the highest to the lowest functioning individuals with characteristics of autism. So, and that was really the biggest change in that with the DSM-5 is that it is a spectrum and it's much wider now, including at the high end, Asperger's syndrome. So the onset before the age of three is normally when you see the characteristics, usually much earlier. Research has shown that um, if autism spectrum disorder is, quote, caught earlier, children um, show more success in treatment. Um, more frequent in males, four to five times more likely in males than in females. And about 70% of autism spectrum disorder also have an intellectual disability. So please know that the intellectual component is not always there with those with autism spectrum disorder. And that is why, a big reason why it is a spectrum, right? So on the high end of the spectrum, there is no, or there is less of, you could say, an intellectual disability. It's more social and more about um, communication and that kind of thing. So some characteristics, impairment in social relationships, they show um, a noticeable lack of awareness or even existence of um, feelings of others. They may not like to be touched or held, they avoid eye contact and prefer solitary play. There is um, impaired speech quite often, about half of autistic children do not develop speech at all. And speech is often like an echo of what is heard. So if speech is developed, um, oftentimes it's more of an echo, whether that be of what other people say, um, or of movies or shows that they really like or have watched before. Um, and it actually is really interesting because you'll see with a lot of patients with autism spectrum, in that they'll hear it once and they're able to repeat, repeat, repeat. It's very, very interesting. There's a very narrow range of interests and activities and in that they kind of get fixated on what they like, right? They really like it. Um, and they may focus on objects almost obsessively is, is a big one. And then this last one, there is sameness and routine. That's very, very important. Usually becoming distraught and angry if change occurs. So oftentimes you'll see in school districts, the administration who's kind of orchestrating or kind of administering, right, fire drills and stuff like that, they'll be really openly communicating with the intervention specialist teachers who have students on the spectrum because they know change is really, really hard for them. So they try to alleviate that as much as possible. Most engage in what's called self-soothing behaviors to block out the extrasensory info. They do not seem to have a filter to block out something that could be overwhelming to them, but is irrelevant, um, as if there's no selective attention. So the self-soothing could be like rocking, um, and they kind of look like, like 
ticks almost that they have um, that is soothing to them. So some causes. You should know that there is a lot of research and a lot of controversy over the causes of autism spectrum disorder. Um, likely, it is likely that there's both genetics and environment playing a role, which is the case for most things that we talk about. Researchers have identified a number of genes associated with the disorder, and studies of people with autism spectrum disorder have found irregularities in several regions of the brain and abnormal levels of serotonin or other neurotransmitters in the brain. So there very much is a biological component, obviously, hence neurodevelopmental. The next one we'll talk about is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. It is a developmental disability involving short attention span, distractibility, and extreme difficulty in remaining inactive for any period of time. So not able to sit still for very long, not able to focus during things like story time and stuff like that. Um, this is probably one of the better known disorders that we'll be talking about. Um, and that's a good thing, right? That's an advantage, but you want to make sure that you have the terminology and the vocabulary to write about it and to speak articulately, articulately, not just emotionally and kind of from a common sense point of view, because we're talking about people, right? We want to articulate what it is is happening. This disorder estimated to affect some three to five percent of school age children and there are some subtypes and it's not necessarily that you have to really know the subtypes other than that these are characteristics, right? So the hyperactive impulsive, there's the predominantly inattentive and then the combined hyperactive impulsive and inattentive. So we'll look at each of those. Inattention is being easily distracted. They miss details, forget things, frequently switch from one activity to another because they're, they're not able to keep their focus on that one thing. Um, become bored with the task after only a few minutes um, unless they're doing something enjoyable and that they can't force their focus. It has to be something that's naturally drawing them. Have difficulty focusing attention on organizing, completing a task, or even learning something new because they don't know if it's interesting yet. And then having trouble completing or turning in homework assignments after often losing things, pencil, pen, toys, assignments um, needed to complete those tasks or activities. And they don't seem to listen when spoken to and that there may be like eye contact and physically appearing to listen, but they're not hearing what it is that's being said. Oftentimes daydreaming, becoming easily confused, moving slowly, have difficulty processing information as quickly and accurately as others. So they're not able to kind of keep up with the pace uh, and struggle to follow instructions because of the same reasons. Hyperactivity, this one being again pretty self-explanatory, but they fidget and squirm in seats, talking a lot, dashing around, getting from one place to another, touching or playing with anything and everything in sight, having trouble sitting still, um, being constantly in motion, right? Like it's, it's a physical hyperactivity, but also mentally having and then having difficulty doing quiet tasks or activities. And then there's the impulsivity, and this is being impatient. So they blurt out inappropriate comments or blurt out when they really shouldn't be, show their emotions without restraint. There's not a lot of control there um, and act without regard for consequences, whether it is that they know them and don't care or um, think that it's not worth it or that it is worth it, I guess you could say, or just forgetting them, have difficulty waiting for things they want, waiting for their turn in a game, for instance, and often interrupt conversations or others' activities with a lack of, uh, of understanding that they should wait. So what might be some causes? Research, again, points to a combination of both genetics and environmental factors. Treatment often involves administering stimulant drugs like Adderall, Ritalin, Concerta. This is interesting if you think about it because oftentimes with ADHD, there's that hyperactivity. So why in the world would a doctor prescribe a stimulant? Well, they actually improve the symptoms of the disorder, often having a calming effect. Um, many have adverse side effects, but in a minor, they have those opposite effects. Individuals with ADHD may have other disorders like a learning disability, um, oppositional defiant disorder, conduct disorder, anxiety, depression, or even bipolar. 
one disorder does not cause another, right? That's There's a correlation, a relationship, not a cause, but the symptoms of one may make another more noticeable, severe, or just perpetuate the other. And the two, two of the ones we just listed, we're going to talk about again. Um, there is not a specific place in the notes that you found, either if you're my student or on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, again, you can find that store linked below this video to find the notes that go along with this video. So it, it is a nice guide. But back in the personality notes, so if you kind of go back on my YouTube channel and back in your notes, if you've printed those out, you'll find personality disorders. And with antisocial personality disorder, I talk about oppositional defiant and conduct disorder. You want to go back to those and make additional notes, or you could totally just be like on a post-it note or and put those on top of your notes, right? Because we're going to talk about them a little more in depth here. ODD, oppositional defiant disorder. Behavior typically starts by the age of eight, but it may start as early as preschool years, so like three, four, right? Symptoms must last for at least six months and become more than, quote, normal childhood misbehavior, right? Because it's defiant disorder, right? So these children are misbehaving, but all children misbehave. So it's got to be more than that normal misbehavior. They actively do not follow adults' requests, Again, a lot of kids do that. So at what point is it disordered? You just got to keep that in your mind. Angry and resentful of others, arguing with adults, blaming others for their own mistakes is a big one. Has fewer no friends or has lost friends because of a lot of these characteristics. Is um, in constant trouble at school, losing temper, spiteful or seeks revenge, um, touchy or easily annoyed like temperamentally. The pattern of behaviors must be different from those of other children around the same age and developmental level. And right, that changes, right? The amount that a child, quote, normally misbehaves normally reduces or changes into different types of misbehavior in development. The behavior is thought to be caused by a combination of biological, psychological, and social factors. There's a lot going on there. Conduct disorder has been associated with things like child abuse. So family conflicts, genetic defects and poverty, um, parental drug addiction or alcoholism. The diagnosis is more common among boys and children with conduct disorder tend to be impulsive, difficult to control and unconcerned about the feelings of others, right? So they have a lack of empathy, a lack of guilt and remorse when they do something wrong. This should be sounding very familiar. Because with antisocial personality disorder, which cannot be diagnosed until the age of 18, but have to show symptoms of that um, since the age of 15, we're probably diagnosed with conduct disorder as a child. At least we find that oftentimes. So again, symptoms being antisocial behaviors. And I'm going to say it again because even... Some of my students trip up on this. Antisocial does not mean they don't want to be around other people. It means they probably shouldn't be. It means that their behaviors are anti-promoting social interaction and that they do bad things in social interaction, like bullying and fighting, breaking rules without an apparent reason, cruel or aggressive behavior towards animals, or people fighting, using dangerous weapons, forced sexual activity, mugging or purse snatching, destruction of property, so deliberately setting fires, breaking and entering, destroying other people's property on purpose, heavy drinking and or heavy illicit drug use, because again, there's they don't really care for the consequences, lying to get a favor, running away, and truancy beginning before the age of 13, and vandalism. Children with conduct disorder may go on to develop personality disorders as adults, and we talked about that, particularly antisocial. Um, if their behaviors worsen, these individuals may also develop significant drug and legal problems, right? Because they're following down that path. So that wraps up our neurodevelopmental disorders. Stay tuned. Make sure you have subscribed to my YouTube channel so that you can catch that next video I'm uploading. And again, the links you'll find to um, my Teachers Pay Teacher stores and all the notes for my class are linked below. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great one.